The Lulberts, that's our word. Brought to you by Room for Freedom, I think. Is, that, is there something there yet? I don't know. I don't think so. <laughs> and I'm here with James Babb, um, who is on vacation in the lovely state of Maine, who's heavily breathing. <laughs> Is it really that bad? <laughs> what? What? <laughs> you're, you're breathing. You're sighing like, ah, Maine. <laughs> no, I love Maine. I am in Maine. I am reporting live from the Forks, mm-hmm. Maine, which is named after the many rivers that fork. And I have no cell phone service. Um Virtually no services of any kind are available up here, except for rafting, hiking, um, ATVing. Generally, you know, hanging out outside. Mm-hmm. It'll work, and you're and you're in your car. <laughs> are you stealing Wi-Fi? I'm in my, this is the mo- the mobile studio. It's okay. a mobile studio, <laughs> fully equipped as any uh, land based studio would be. Yeah. Are you siphoning Wi Fi from the local? Because uh, that's what you used to do when you were on the fiends. Is you would just perk into a <laughs> a public library and start uh, using their Wi Fi. I've done that. I am at the inn by the river, which is where I'm staying at, and I'm use I'm out in the parking lot using their the hotel Wi Fi. So it actually works barely. It's about as good as you're going to get for a network connection around here. Yeah. All right. So let's just d- delve right in because I we, I haven't mean to do this <laughs> since like the two times you were on and I completely flake on it every single time. So let's get into Dear Babby. We should, we should have like a little okay. Theme. We need to have like a little all theme. right, like a little doo doo doo, Dear Babby. This right. is this is the segment where we give back. Yeah. Right. It's right. We give back. We share our knowledge. Okay. And you can always ask Dear Babby questions on thelowbirds.com. There's like a little contact section, and there should be like a little option for it. Okay. And uh, eventually, I'll, I'll, I'll not forget it and ask you. So <laughs> let's get into the older ones first. Uh, here's from the inbox. Okay. All right. So, dear Babby, will you run for the presidential candidate of the LP if Jim Jesus and Baron Von Stormhaven are a part of your campaign team uh, by uh, winning in Winnipeg? Winnipeg. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. And definitely no. <laughs> But, uh, I mean, seriously, you'd have to be a freaking loser to want that job, wouldn't you? I mean, <laughs> just think about it. Just think about, like, you're going to have to go up and, like, prove yourself against the Austin Petersons and the Augustus Invictuses and the, and, the, and the Gary Johnsons of the world. No, no thanks. So you, you're kind of out in the woods. You're not out of the woods yet when it comes to what's going on in the libertarian movement. So you didn't hear what happened to Austin Peterson, so I'm putting that in my notes. Austin Peterson. <laughs> no, didn't he? Um, I, I, I guess for, he went back to his Republican roots yeah, or okay. something. I, okay. I don't know. Whatever. Yeah, he, he left. Something like that. Yeah, he left and raised like $100,000 to run for a seat in, was it uh, Missouri? Missouri? Is that how they say it over there? Missouri? Missouri. We got to talk to Randy England about that, but uh, <laughs> I think you know what you know with 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 you know my due apologies to the folks of Missouri. I think that's great. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so here's another classic one. I think these are like one of these is like a year old. I'm so sorry, dear Babby, where can I get the best walnut cheese sauce in the D.C. area? Preferably with some Dominoes thrown in. Thanks. Cooked, uh, spirit cooked in Spokane. <laughs> well, the only place I eat at is, is Comet Pizza in D.C. I mean, do we really need any other place? I, I just, you know, that's that's gonna that's just the go-to. You're in yeah. you're in D.C. You get you go where the locals eat. <laughs> Comet Pizza. <laughs> you re- you can request your pizza. What is it with hot dogs or with I don't know what's the other thing with wings? I don't what what is it? I don't even I, what is the sp- the supposed code language that I'm I don't even know what it is. Extra but um, <laughs> <laughs> if you order the mac and cheese, they're gonna know you you are one sick mofo. Yeah, I don't it's, know. it's always funny when I hear these stories about oh someone from KFC, like someone who was running a KFC or whatever drive through got busted for selling weed out of the window or something like that. Their code is always like extra biscuits or extra, extra crispy. It's like, come on, can't you like think of something a little bit more clever that no one will accidentally just ask? I'd like the salad. Yeah. 
<laughs> okay, no one will ever ask that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Can I get some greens with that? Okay. <laughs> Boom. And they always get caught because someone genuinely wants extra biscuits or extra extra crispy or something. <laughs> See, but, the if, but but if they had been asked, if they had made the salad the code word, no one ever orders a salad at KFC. <laughs> so you're salad. totally safe. <laughs> Do you have a salad? Oh, I'm on it. <laughs> Next thing you know, you're like, okay, that's three hundred and fifty dollars. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> that was the code for an ounce, buddy. <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> Dear Babby, I just watched a young video of a young woman peeing on a flag while using a device that allows her to urinate standing up. I was oddly aroused. Did this make me gay? Signed, Lonely in Long Island. Why would that make you gay? I, I saw the video. I thought I was hot. You know, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> did make me gay. No, um, I think... I think um, I think Steve Miller Miller had the right comment when he said that that video is like finally you guys that have this 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 uh, this porn fetish, <laughs> it's gone mainstream. <laughs> Congratulations on yeah, and folks who loved like this pissing on a flag uh, porn theme, it's finally caught on. So, I I think the real the real agenda behind like having a bounty over her head is not to have her hurt or killed, but just to find out who she is and be like, yo, hey, I'm into water play. What's up? <laughs> she, she, she's um she's a she's a Pennsylvania uh, lady, and I I I'm not acquainted with her, but we do have mutual friends. I am concerned about her safety, and I I wish her all the best. Yep. I thought what she did was just completely audacious and. Uh, well, let's just say possibly reckless, but, um, you know, who can argue with the sentiment? Yep. And besides, it was Chinese, right? I mean, every, <laughs> the flag was made in China, <laughs> according to her. I mean, isn't this what you wanted? This is why you voted for Donald Trump, is to stop China and all these other companies from flooding our market with cheap stuff. And bring, <laughs> bring American jobs back to America and make America great again. That's what she's doing. Yeah, she's just making America great again. You know, that's... Anyway... Uh, kudos to that lady. I, I'm, I was, I saw that. I'm like, wow, you know, like suddenly, like Jim Weeks dancing around in a thong. That's totally boring. <laughs> Ooh, we're gonna get letters about that. Sorry, Jim, but you, know, <laughs> you, 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 you got to step it up now. The, yep. You know, the game is the game has been uh, increased. Yep. All right, so dear, and, and sorry about all the the handling noises. You don't have. It's, it's not like they have invented a. Uh, they should a mic stand for your car. <laughs> you know, I I didn't realize that was coming through. I'm going to try to be more careful. I actually have a mic stand that I invented Ooh. for Freedom Fiends to do in the car, and it involves some rubber bands, and I forgot them. So okay. I apologize. Man. I will, I will do my best to minimize the external noises i'm just glad we were able to, were able to do a show this week because everything has just been so hectic in real life uh we didn't even do a show last week and it was like a miracle that i got you <laughs> i was like finally someone who wants to hop on that has the same time schedule that i do all right so here we go here's a, dear babby i have a friend who is obsessed with filipino fast food i fear he may be using it to get away uh as a way to meet girthy femme sexual partners what should I do? Jolly in Las Vegas. I think he's talking about Jolly Bee. I I think he's talking about Balut, right? That <laughs> that Filipino delicacy street food, the fertilized yeah. duck egg still in its shell, right? Is that what we're talking about? Or are we talking about something else? Uh, well, Filipino fast food. I think, and this is in Las Vegas, apparently. So I think he's talking about Jolly Bee. Which, by the way, Jolly Bee is pretty on point. If you haven't been there. If there's, I don't even know what that is. It, okay, so <laughs> it's really popular in the Philippines, and anywhere that Fil the Filipinos go uh, in the world, they're there to, to capitalize off of them because everybody wants a little taste at home. And it's weird because they have fried chicken, and their fried chicken is actually better than KFC or Popeyes or whatever. Um, but they also it comes with things like spaghetti <laughs> with, with hot dogs in it. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. No, and it, it, I, I'm telling you, it's on point. It's on point. Uh, I think this might be about Steve Miller Miller. <laughs> yeah, I you know I feel like I haven't really I re I feel like I really just don't have anything to contribute there except seriously don't eat the balut it looks awful if you've ever seen a picture of that I don't know they love it, it it's do they serve that at this restaurant no unfortunately I'd try it oh 
All right. Yeah. Well, it's a it's a developing bird embryo. Yeah. <laughs> a little yeah. A little chicken joy. A little <laughs> duck joy. It's only a little. There's, you know, there's only a few feathers in it. It's mostly. It's kind of like an egg, but it's kind of like duck and it's comes in a neat package it's and a hard they love with it with the duck so, with the bonus duck yeah <laughs> with, <the> bonus duck. <laughs> with a bonus baby duck yeah. it's it's awesome kids love it <laughs> yeah they do oh my goodness they love it out there all right so dear babby what's the secret to a happy marriage you're one of the um what is it you're one of the only lulberts in a happy long-term romantic situation signed neckbeard and nantucket <laughs> Hmm. Okay. <laughs> Wait, is that a question? What's the secret to the happy marriage? <laughs> Denial. Um, <laughs> just lowering expectations. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, I seriously have no answer to that, and um, <laughs> just, I think that's best out. for all involved <laughs> that, uh, hey, you know what? You just go with what works and, and hope for the best. Yeah. All right, so we did those. Let's see. Dear Babby, my sister is having a kid and about to, t um, and about to tell my parents I'll be their first dr grandchild. How You'll be their first grandchild, huh? How do I hijack the conversation and make it about libertarian politics? Signed, Vaping and Keen. Uh, wait a minute. Okay, so the sister's having a baby. Yep. And this is going to be a key conversation. And we want to change the subject to what? Libertarian politics. Oh, it'll be their first grandchild. Maybe I should make the text bigger so I can read it. There we go. Well, I think I think naturally this is a this is an argument about abortion. Okay, and the question is, you know, wow, you you know, sh should this libertarian kid have been aborted? Um, <laughs> no, I don't even know what I'm saying. I have no idea. Um, <laughs> it just seems like that, um, you know. Well, it, wait, wait! I, I see the head. It's coming out. Hey, what about Gary Johnson? No, 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 hey, no, he, and he, he, no. He did say libertarian, not Gary Johnson. <laughs> but when you said libertarian, you didn't say it with a capital L or or a small L. So oh, I, I, okay. I, yeah, it says lowercase. It's a lowercase. Oh, L. okay. In that case, it's like and taxation is theft. Okay, <laughs> you know, but <laughs> still, you know what? Um, Here's your you doctor know, just, bill. $35 for sales tax? Taxation is theft. I mean, seriously, though, can you, I mean, can you imagine, I mean, just the whole hospital system is such a socialist mess. Mm -hmm. It's so disgusting. Anything involving the health system is is a libertarian message in itself. All right. I mean, there is nothing, I mean, you look at the health system it is just horrendous. I am totally planning myself when I need serious health care. I don't know what country I'm going to, but I can tell already that it is not going to be available for me here right now. This system is so, so screwed over by socialists and parasites and do nothings and and rent seekers. And it is. Just, oh. But you repeat yourself. <laughs> it's just awful. Yeah. My I'm, I'm watching my father in law go through with this. He's in his 80s and he's got some very serious medical conditions and it's been very difficult. But then it's it's like stuff like okay, well he needs this like pain patch, a lidocaine pain patch like okay. He says, "Well, he can't get them anymore." Well, why not? Well, the doctor uh, it's not covered by Medicare. Well, I don't care. It's, I'm like, "So? So what if it's covered by Medicare? You need it, you just get it." Well, without Medicare, it's like hundreds of dollars. I, I, I look online. I find a coupon. Oh, yeah, here you can get this for $80. Okay, here. You know. Oh, turns out, nope, you can't use that if, if you're on Medicare. Oh, wow. He's actually blocked from getting the medication that he needs because of Medicare. Right? And like the, it's like the whole thing is so screwed up. Everything he needs to do, like Medicare is deciding how he ends his life. It is disgusting the way this is, 
the way the priorities have all shifted away from the the patient and on to the 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 forms and the bureaucracy and the billings and it is just, what a horrendous mess this health system is i i i don't want to that's why my retirement plan my long-term care instead of a nursing home i'm getting a motorcycle i'm not wearing a helmet and i'm just going for it yep but don't worry trump's gonna get rid of obamacare by just altering it a little bit <laughs> slightly seriously which country do you think we'll be going to to get our health care we'll, we'll be like romania or turkey or <laughs> Middle like, of the who ocean. knows what it's going to be? <laughs> the seasteading institute is going to be the only hope. The seasteading. <laughs> It'll just be a mobile or uh, what is it? Medical tourism. Some kind of off world spa, like health spa. Yeah. All right. So, dear Babby, I'm running against Austin Peterson in the Senate race in Missouri. How do I make an issue of him getting. Uh, hiring an avowed proven donation scammer as his campaign manager. If my, if I myself had helped that same scammer set up a human trafficking charity scam and then defended him to death in the face of the proof, uh, in in face of all the proof that he uh, that he was scamming. Uh, so no, uh, any ways to drop 112 120 pounds before election day? Signed Alicia in Missouri. Whoa. <laughs> what? Could you un could you unpack that for me? I'm, I, 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 I <laughs> okay. So I'm running against Austin Peterson in the Senate race in okay. Missouri because he's running for the GOP nomination in Missouri. Intuitively, I want to support this person. Just I, not that I you know think anybody that with any um, character should run for office, but the fact that it's against Austin Peterson intrigues me. So <laughs> so yes. Let's let's go for that. Uh, so anyway, okay, running against Austin Peterson, and okay. now there's something about human trafficking. What? Okay, so how do I make an issue of him hiring an avowed proven donation scammer as his campaign manager, comma? But do you know who the? Okay, <laughs> okay. All right now, who is this? Uh, who is this person that he's that he's hired? I believe. With a rec I believe. I'm not saying I know <clears throat> for legal reasons uh, that it may be Tony Styles. Whoa! Tony Styles and Austin Peterson are have not the first up. time. This is not the first. Like he's had the same it's, campaign manager when he ran for president. Tony Styles was his campaign yes. manager. Holy cow! Wow. <laughs> uh, <laughs> therefore, I defer to Steve Miller Miller on all on, on all <laughs> topics related to this because he's done his homework, and I have just been sort of sort of a. Um, like driving by the crash going, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I can't look at the carnage. Jesus. <laughs> Keep driving. Keep driving. Stop and take a picture first. <laughs> you know, you, best thing you can do is clear the roadway, get past it, and just get it out of your mind. That sounds horrible to me. And uh, so the trick is how can, he, how can you make an issue of Tony Styles being on there? I would say well, well, hold just on. We, 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 have, we, okay. have, we have to unpack it just a little bit more because she continues on after the comma. If I myself had helped that same scammer set up a human trafficking charity scam and also f defended him to the death in face of all the proof that he was scamming. So now apparently this is, now, she now has we ties get weird. Well. So this Alicia in Missouri. Alicia had previously helped Austin with a human trafficking scam? Yeah, I think that was, I believe, because I don't know for legal reasons, I believe he may be talking about uh, Freedom Arrows, I think that's what it's called. Yeah, Freedom Arrow, where he was setting up a charity and asking for donations to fight, uh, fight this, and I think he raised like 500 bucks. <laughs> for gonna, Freedom Arrows? For Freedom Arrows. But it's a human trafficking. I don't. I. I. I, I I'm out of my trafficking. league here. Yeah, I'm out of my league. Also, do you know any uh, ways to drop 120 pounds before election day? I think that's a fat joke. <laughs> Self-inflicted fat joke. Well, like I guess it depends on how much you're starting out with. But <laughs> let's see. Between now and election day is I don't know. Was it this year or next year? I don't know. I think I think you I'm going to well I don't I guess Penn Jillette lost what, what 300 pounds or something like that. Go ask him. <laughs> I'm going to say I'm going to say a low carb diet and a tapeworm. 
All right. <laughs> Moving along. Dear Babby, what is the most effective way of getting the, in, in, in parentheses, Jews into, uh, into the helicopter? Signed, Alt-Reich in Augusta. Augusta. <laughs> I have no, uh, 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 th- I have no answer to that. That is, uh, there. I don't even understand the question. And is this? I'm just thinking uh, Augusta. Um, is that Maine? Augusta, Maine, right? I don't know. Is there a is there a, a correlation there? Mm, I don't know. I think so. Is he in Maine? Typically, right now? typically the alt right does not come to me for advice, so I'm a little confused. But. Uh, I, I don't know, you know. So they they want Jews to get into the helicopter. Is that what he's saying? I guess so. <laughs> and and, and wh- with echoes. What's the best way to do that? Um, I, I got nothing. Got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> nothing. It just sounds completely stupid. And there's a great Augustus Invictus joke in there somewhere, but I just can't find it. Dear Babby, I run a box store in Michigan. I have. I keep having to chase a vehicle out of my parking lot nightly because the driver of said vehicle appears to be pleasuring himself in view in full view of my paying customers. What should I do? Sign Kokesh and Kalamazoo. See, at first I thought this was the cops, but then this Kokesh reference makes me think, oh, oh, it's yeah, one it's of those cops. situations. Oh, wait, no. <laughs> I'm not I think of un, I think of you know un, unsavory you know person in your park in the parking lot pleasuring himself. Who else would it be but the cops? But, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, get that ticket. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I guess I would oh, say, um, forfeiture. Mm. you know, this is in front of the paying customers. <laughs> what are the customers paying for? And Boxes. I don't know. <laughs> Could could we add this as an attraction? Could we could we just sell admission to this? Um, I don't know. Well, could gonna... we get Austin Peterson involved? <laughs> I don't I don't know. Well, if you're gonna fap to anything, it might as well be uh, boxes, right? Uh... <laughs> Austin Peterson and Tony Styles. I mean, let's face it. You know that gives that that that's a little bit arousing. No, just <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Dear Babby, how do I continue making my podcast while hiding my obvious drinking problem? Signed, Lush in Las Vegas. Hey. <laughs> I don't know. Why don't you handle this one? What, who, do you, who do you think, Jim Jesus? Well, first, you have to consider it a problem. That's your problem. Next question. <laughs> well, you know, right. Let's see if we can do What do you think they mean by drinking problem? Like you're spilling your drink? Or, I mean, what are we talking about here? Yeah. What's well, there was a no effect song that's something like uh, I, I don't drink and drive because I'm always spilling my beer. <laughs> it's it's really a challenge, especially like while you're lighting a, a crack pipe. Yeah. So the struggle is real. The struggle is very very real. Yeah. Yeah. So um, this one, how was Babby formed? How girl how girl get pregnant? Magnificently. Magnificently. <laughs> There's some things that, that I'm not going to be able to help you with if you yeah. don't know by now. Okay. Dear Babby, I'm thinking about running for office as a libertarian and self-funding my campaign. Should I just burn the money in a giant pile instead? Signed, Electoral and El Paso. No. It should be thrown in a giant hole. Uh, <laughs> burning it's releases carbon the in the atmosphere and will contribute to global sending warming. sending a message. <laughs> Safely disposing of your money in a giant hole not only fills in the hole, but is environmentally sound. So that that's my suggestion. But I, first of all, why would anyone spend money on a libertarian campaign? I thought the whole idea of having a libertarian campaign is so you, because you can have a lot of fun running for office with no money. Yeah, or trolling. trolling. Yeah, again, for no money, yeah. right? It, it, it's... The, the the whole idea is to have a lot of fun for for no money at all. So although I get this, I screwed up. I you know I ran for for uh, treasurer of Pennsylvania last year. You were trying to get back the treasure. Well, I I didn't fill out some of the paperwork, and uh. they're billing me now a thousand dollars. Please donate. They want to. They want to. <laughs> th- I'm in violation of like campaign finance reporting. For, for reporting no nothing i just i'm not saying i'm not saying i never sent in the forms but there's a good chance that at least according to them i never sent in the forms so 
I'm not sure where this is going to go, but if you if you hear later that I'm indicted for like campaign finance fraud, you'll know what happened. So, but yeah. Anyway, well, you could have paid it off using the treasure, though. I mean, it was your treasure. <laughs> Part of it was your treasure at the treasury. Dear Babby, but I, I didn't win. So <laughs> oh. anyway. <laughs> Dear Babby, 12 hot dogs, 8 hot dog buns. Why? Need I say more? Signed, wieners, but no buns to put them in. <sighs> Again, these, these, this Pizzagate thing is just it's really getting old, okay? I, I'm sorry, but <laughs> why do I have to keep answering questions about Pizzagate? Uh, this is not even. I don't, what, what, people don't know the format of Dear, Dear Abby or Dear Babby, right? What is the airspeed velocity of an unladen swallow? European or African. (laughs) I don't know that. Ah. Dear Babby, a well-known celebritarian recently relocated to the tax farm I reside in. He's known to have a penchant for self-flagellation in parking lots. I'm a little concerned about how we proceed, uh, how to proceed if I should encounter such levacious behavior. What if he wants to shake hands at some point or say at a liberty event or festival uh is it bad taste to refuse signed undead in arizona your sound broke up on you a little bit there could you just repeat the main part of that uh so he's as a well-known celebrity is recently located to the same tax farm that he's in and he has a pension for self-flagellation in parking lots what should he do if he offers to shake hands at a liber- liberty event at some point shake his hand Shake his hand. That's Adam Kokesh. Come on, you can you can wipe it off later. It's fine. <laughs> Some people would pay good money for that. <laughs> I wouldn't. <laughs> Reminds me of that story. Remember that there's some story where like a like a um, a recipient of a of a sperm donation ended up with like a black baby and was freaked out by it because like I ordered a white sperm sample. <laughs> do, you remember, do you remember that story? No. <laughs> <laughs> was it a Trumpkin? Oh. <laughs> was this Jared Howe? <laughs> <laughs> Jared Howe ordered a white baby. No, and it can't, you know. Oh, my culture. My culture. My white culture. Me and my wife's baby are upset. <laughs> <laughs> that poor guy. You know, I don't even know if he, I, you know, I don't even think that he ever took the, the time to block me like he has so many other people. I, I, I preemptively I, blocked him because I, if I know people are like, quick on that block button i'm i'm trying to be a little bit quicker so i have steve shive blocked <laughs> i was kind of happy Who about that? that wow you Who? don't know about him either steve shives is a uh, youtuber he used, he used to make really good like skepticism kind of videos like he would kind of debunk conspiracy theories or um, pseudoscience or stuff like that but then he would like talk about like his liberalism but whatever you just kind of ignore those videos and then it just started getting worse and worse and worse now he's like this full-blown social justice warrior, and he thinks that people should be banned from you. Like, he wants to f- friend people who work at YouTube so that he can have them block all the people that he doesn't like and ban them from the website. Like, this guy's horrible. Whoa. Yeah. But yeah. This is, I, this is, things have progressed to a, to a, a stage that I just can't track anymore. Yeah. So I, there's no way I can follow all and of that. And he blocked me, and I never tweeted at him or anything. <laughs> you, just, you got well you know what on, I, on what, is, what is that called when you're just blocked based on your reputation like you never even had an interaction just automatically blocked yeah. because we know we, we know what that guy's gonna do yeah we know what he's gonna say that's gonna be there's no way we could possibly let that guy interact on our news feed so we're gonna just preemptively block yeah so I blo- as soon as I saw him and I was like, oh, he didn't block me on Facebook. I better take care of this one real quick. And I blocked him. <laughs> and I know Jared Howe blocks everybody. So I was like, I want to block him first. That way I have like the upper hand. So if I can always unblock him to see what he's doing and then block him again. <laughs> so, I can't do that <laughs> if, if I'm blocked. Right? He just, he just Man, invisible. I can't. You know what? It's funny, though, because there's so many of these. I don't know. What, what do you Snowflakes. call the, the, the person who, who wants to be associated with sort of a, a, a liberty community, but yet is obviously a right wing eugenicist fascist? What, what the hell's going on? Like, 
I, I, a, I don't understand how these things can coexist, but it's so popular. Um, they've seen so many examples of this weird hybrid of, you know, liberty, you know, you use some liberty keywords when you're talking about uh, uh, ethno nationalism. I just I, I'm I'm totally bo- you know boggled by it. I know we've we've talked about this before, but yeah, I think it's just, they just don't want to admit clueless. they don't want to admit that they changed their minds. So they want to keep all the labels so that way they don't have to say like oh I was wrong about this, but then you know they can have all these other opinions. And then if you question them on it, then well, it's, well you're a cuck, you know you're just a leftist, you're a communist. By the way, can you name a, con- a communist country that had open borders? I'm still looking for one. <laughs> Washington, D.C. <laughs> Touche. That's Touché. All I, mean, I don't know. But, um, yeah, yeah, all these Soviet the- states and satellite states and, you know, China and all these other stuff, they have really strict immigration policies. They always have because they don't want people well, freeloading, right? It's just, well, it's just good farm management to keep a good border. <laughs> Okay, yeah. like seriously, if you I mean, you can't have your livestock wandering over into the farm next door and vice versa. It's just too confusing. So good farmers put up good fences. That's just part of just part of managing your herd. Yep. So that's all the dear Babby questions I have. So we need to well, catch that, you that up. That was quite a supply. Like, yeah, wow, I, I, I was, I was really I'm pretty happy. impressed with that. Yeah, I think we had more this time than we normally do on like than we did on the fiends or even on this show even or ever on. yeah yeah so it's been like the whole show good job everybody send more <laughs> send more so i can forget them too uh so you're still not out of the woods yet <laughs> like literally at, not out of the woods yet so you're kind of not really i'm in, in the, the wo- i'm i am in the woods for the summer i've been i went to pork fest i have in fact just i'm i'm in a hotel or like a it's like a bed and breakfast now but I've been camping for over three weeks straight, including Pork Fest. So uh, this is like sort of my first time like indoors in a while. So pr- pretty excited about yeah. that. So how was Pork Fest? I heard it was really co- even even quieter this year. Well, first let's talk about Somalia Fest. Oh, Somalia. Okay. What is the difference? Uh, all right. Well, Somalia Fest was prior to pork fest so pork fest was kind of the after party for somalia fest (laughs) which which is you know it's already on par with pork fest as as far as prestige goes Mm -hmm. and i'd say by next year it's going to completely eclipse what whatever's left of pork fest so somalia fest was uh uh, i saw ian freeman was there um i don't i think he was the only band Pork fest band person I saw, but it was a, a spirit of, hey, we're just people hanging out and you know, and and we don't have to ban anybody. So that was kind of cool. Nice. Um, <clears throat> well, and what if, what I did if, get what shushed. If, what if, what we we had a we had a pirate party at Pork Fest at the Bab Compound, and I did get shushed by a neighbor. At a, but it was it was like one at one o'clock, you know. We were being we were being pretty loud, but it was one o'clock. But you know, and and I was like, oh, you know, I'm sorry. And but the people I was with are like, hey, this is Somalia Fest. We get to you know we, we don't have to we don't have to be quiet. I'm like, come on. Even in Somalia, they had, they do have neighbors. So, yeah. but um, so I guess maybe there's a you know some would like Somalia Fest to be this you know we're going to be loud and screw you kind of thing. And, you know, I kind of like that to an extent, but uh, so we're, let's just say it's still being sort of um, established what the cultural norms are for late night at Somalia Fest. But uh, I'm looking forward to seeing this develop and grow and become way more fun than Pork Fest ever was. Yeah. Uh, was it at Rogers too or no? Yes. Yes, it was. Um, but because it was before pork fest it was only a little bit disgusting so oh. so yeah it was pretty good you kind of had to tone it down cuz you didn't have a big permit for the whole entire park like pork fest or or did they well they they just didn't have the well it used to be at pork fest when the crowds arrived it would just become like woodstock like with mm. just mud and overflowing sewage and piles of trash and don't drink and the wa- don't dog drink the punch. crap on the sidewalk and <laughs> don't drink the punch don't drink the punch man 
<laughs> but you know, since they started banning people and they fired the LRN promotional wing of, of Pork Fest, they've they've managed to get get it down to a manageable size where yeah. it's it's <laughs> it's just kind of nice. It, it's kind of nice now. That's a that's but, a positive way of of wording it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they they recognize the problem of people of too many people having too much fun, meeting too many new friends, meeting you know. So they're like, no, oh, well, let's 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 bring that back a notch. And yeah. uh, there were still you know there were still some favorites there, but man, the list of of my Porkfest favorites that weren't there was so big. I wouldn't even try to name everybody, yeah. but. Uh, so many people that I've used to seeing year after year after year, it's like, wow, just just not there. So it's, there's definitely some changes going on. Yeah. Um, and I heard from a few people like vendors who actually went there and they were saying this is the first time we did not turn a profit. Uh, oh, well, I'm sure the vendors were struggling. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not surprised just due to not that many customers. You need you need volume. Yeah. <sighs> That's a shame. That's a shame. And I'm not going to Jack Fest this year. And I know you said you weren't going either. Unfortunately, I cannot go this yeah. year. It was, I, I, a... I would like to go. Yeah, I think I it's. Like I think it's good practice, and you know, in case you end up in like a refugee camp. <laughs> um, <laughs> if the refugee camp had a uh, no nap violation sign. <laughs> I love. I, I enjoyed it. Yeah, it is just. Um, yeah, it's a little scrappy. It's a little scrappy, and yeah. uh, for for good or for bad. Some people love that, and I like it. Uh, yeah, my family pretty much told me, "Hell no, you're not. No way." It was, <laughs> but it was too I would, scrappy for them, man. Yeah, they're like they're they like to be pampered. Yeah, they like those things where they are showers. Is that what they call them? Showers. Yeah, it's like suddenly even Rogers them. Campground is like, ooh, boy, that's nice. That's <laughs> that's that's really nice. They're like, wow. Yeah. So yeah, I'm not gonna make it to that one. Didn't make it to. Um, did you go to the? Um, no, because it was the same time as Pork Fest, the Midwest Peace and Liberty. <sighs> now that looked like fun. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I saw some great reports coming from Lou and others about what a great time they were having over there. So I want I want to go there next year. Yeah, I'm gonna try to do everything I can to get to, to go next year. I'll do everything. Assuming I can. it doesn't conflict with Somalia Fest. Mm, I'd rather. I think I'd rather go to MLP. I have not been to Pork Fest, but if trends continue, if current trends continue, which who knows, uh, and it seems like there's gonna be more people in MLP. Midwest Peace Liberty, yeah. Well, one one event is growing, the other event is shrinking. Mm -hmm. So so you follow those trajectories and the conclusion is inevitable. Yeah. I think they might I think they had some word about like they might be having to switch venues. The uh, because I guess the owners found out that they were anarchists and they were like, Whoa, 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 hold on. <laughs> we're Wait, I didn't here, see buddy. a single flag over here. Yeah. Wait a minute. <laughs> hold on. So I think they're they're having to look for somewhere else to go now. Womp womp. I'm sure they will, though. Well, after Pork Fest, I, we stayed in New Hampshire for an extra week, and we stayed at Gunstock Mountain Resort in Guilford, New Hampshire, which is where Pork Fest used to be before Rogers Campground. I don't know if you knew that. But um, this is a – it's a, like a ski resort that has a campground and some, and some summer activities like zip lines and stuff like that. Super fun. But it is run by the. It is a county-owned facility, so I think that's why Pork Fest left. It's like a little bit too government-regulated, mm. but it's way nicer than Rogers. <laughs> even a even a county operation can beat Rogers. That's what you know. That's the sad thing there. But uh, it was right around um, just prior to uh, Independence Day, so. I don't know if it was just maybe the time of year, but one thing I noticed that these big RVs have, did you know there's a, a trailer hitch mounted flagpole you can get? Mm -hmm. It's like a, like, a, like a trailer, like it fits right into your trailer hitch, and it, it telescopes to be this like 25-foot flagpole. Wow. That you can so you can so you can display your flag even while, you know, RVing. There were multiples of these in the campground. It wasn't just one. This was a, this was a trend. I'm like, wow, <laughs> really, uh, really into that. So, 
Huh. I don't know. That's interesting. I'm hmm, maybe I should get a truck and get one of those things and put one of my weird flags up there. <laughs> like my Bobby. Hill. Well, I don't I don't think you can drive down the road with this thing because it's so big, but one like say you're parking and tailgating, yeah, you could you could hoist this flagpole and you could you yeah, you, you, who knows what flag you've got that you might want to display. Well, I'm against all flags myself, but you you do have some interesting ones. Speaking of interesting flags, I should probably plug this because I haven't plugged it in a couple episodes. If you want one of my Bobby Hill, that's my purse, I don't know you flag for free. All you have to do, and I have a bunch of other stuff I'm giving away. A bunch of cool stuff I'm also giving away, including Ben Stone's book. Um, what is it called? It's right there. Sedition and Subversion Sabotage Field Manual Number 1. Three-part Very solution cool. to the state. Got a copy of that, and it's signed by um, uh, him, by Ben Stone and Michael W. Dean. So this one's really special. Um, I, I We had copies of that at Porkfest that uh, the girls were selling along with their, like, 3D-printed magnets and stuff. This year, get this, the, the girls were... They were they were working their own products. They had Ben Stone's book, and they were and Tatiana Moreau's also roped them in. So they were like selling Tatiana Moreau's merchandise. Nice. Like <laughs> they were they were working it. So uh, they they had a good time. Yeah. So I'm giving away a copy of that, and then there's a bunch of other stuff like Bip Strongs and stickers and and other things too, which I'm not going to mention. Uh, but if you want to get that, all you got to do is leave a funny. It could be zero stars. It would be awesome if you gave me four. <laughs> if it all has to do is be funny and make Steve Miller Miller laugh the most. And if you do that, I'll send you all that stuff. There you go. Nice. Yeah. And you can go and buy one of those things for your trailer hitch and fly it around. And, then, and of course, everybody will be pissed off who actually use those things for their America flag or their Gadsden flag. Or both, which is kind of ironic. <laughs> but... <laughs> Or their police, their, oh, yeah. the police lives matter or whatever. Like, <laughs> blue lives matter. Pick one. <laughs> their don't tread on me and their blue lives matter flag. <laughs> the blue, the blue flag. Pick one, please. Uh, yeah, but I, I would definitely would fly one of my flags. Let's see. Um, so, yeah, what else are you out of the loop on? So, was someone held up a buy Bitcoin sign during Yellen's testimony to Congress? <laughs> Have you Epic. heard about this? I saw that. I, I cheered for joy. I was like, that is the best. And I, I, I'm still waiting to find out who it was, but I, I congratulate that man. Yeah, they had someone post a picture. He, he, he showed himself and he was asking for donations. Uh, please donate. Someone sent him like one of my friends on, the, on Facebook. I can't remember who. He gave him like 25 bucks. If you look for it, you could probably find it. And then CNBC had to do basically do a whole report on how well Bitcoin has been doing. <laughs> like, like well, after I, this. I heard that it like went up three and a half percent like just that moment. Nice. Because like, <laughs> like, it's been down, what, 30 percent recently, right? What are we at right now? Oh, it was down all the way to where it was three months ago. Yeah. <laughs> Wait. 23. 70, uh, 23.37. And Monero's pretty down. I got out at a good point. <laughs> I got out when it was really, really high. Um, I, I'm just stacking them all. Just keep sending me cryptocurrency. Yeah. I just want it. I want it. I want it. Oh, pl yeah. Please. Please send it to me, too. <laughs> Probably not going to cash out just yet. I, I, I want to wait until after this fork happens. I'm going to see what, what's going to happen out of this. You've heard about the fork, right? In August? Oh, is it is it going to fork for they're, sure? They're say they're going. It's it's going to fork. They don't know if it's going to be a hard or a soft fork, and I, I'm not a hundred percent on it. But I kind of was listening to the ta speaking of Tatiana. I was listening to her show with Brian Sovereign and Stephanie, and they were kind of talking about it. So basically, one of two things could happen. They could actually like fork it, the actual chain itself, and it, that fork will be though that sh that blockchain will be dead, and they'll have a new blockchain or. The other fork, I don't know which one's hard or soft. I think the soft is one of another one. It was where they'll basically have another blockchain while Bitcoin still is a thing, but people will move over to the new one and they'll basically like a, like Ethereum, where yeah, like it Ethereum. just split into two. Yeah, yeah, kind of like that. I think that would be cool. That way, I can have two cryptocurrencies instead of <laughs> <laughs> why not? Why not? Yeah. Um, well, you know, Roger Veer calls the the you know the fork uh, an upgrade. Mm -hmm. So, um, I, you know, I don't pretend to, to have any strong opinions. I, I'm following it, but I can't really, 
I'm 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 just not deep enough into it to to have an opinion on whether uh, s- segregated witness or you know like uh, I intuitively just want to want to support whatever Roger Veer supports just because I love the dude, but that's just that's based on personal bias, not on any kind of like information about the subject. So, yep. So yeah, Yellen was speaking during the first round of the Fed's semi-annual monetary policy to report to Congress, and someone held up that sign. It's brilliant. You sir are a hero. <laughs> I love little little stuff like that. Yeah. It just warms my heart. Uh, like the guy uh, Corey Corey Watkins who gets who goes behind home plate at a baseball game with taxation is theft on yeah. his shirt. Like you know these little things. I don't know. I don't. I mean, I guess they don't really mean anything in the end. But I don't, I just get a lot of pleasure out of seeing it. I just I love to see these little just little tiny bits of subversion give me hope. Yeah. Beautiful man. And you know what the thing? If you did you. Watch the video segment of 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 uh, Janet um, when that happened. Mm-mm. Well, it was, and and I only saw like thirty seconds, so I'm not really sure the full context. But some some douchebag congressman is asking her, "What should people do to prepare?" <laughs> Presumably for what horrors she has in store for us. Like, should we be, like, buying beans or stocking, what you know, like, bottling water or, you know, digging holes? What should we be doing to prepare for what you've got coming? And that's when this came up. And it really, so and I just thought that is that is so perfect. And, and it made me think that maybe this wasn't even planned. But when he heard that question, the answer immediately came into his head, buy Bitcoin. Yeah, so. or maybe he knew that some kind of question would come up, like what What should people be doing? That's kind of one of the stock questions. Or if Ron Paul was there, is gold money? <laughs> <laughs> Remember when people thought gold was money? How how antiquated? <laughs> uh, so bulky, so bulky, but shiny. Yeah, you know, he loved the shininess. So uh, we've heard about CNN's blackmail. <laughs> Great! Oh, this is brilliant. Oh yeah, you got to tell me about this one. It okay. was something. Wait, it was about a kid. There was a kid involved. Okay, so rewind the clock a little bit. Trump thought it'd be funny to tweet out a picture, of, or it was a GIF of, or a, no, it was a video. All right, this is important because it was a video with audio. Uh, of Trump when he was in the WWE and he was like, he tackled Vince McMahon or whatever. <laughs> and uh, what they did, and you know, and he was like pummeling him in the face. What they did is they like juxtaposed a picture of CNN's logo over Vince McMahon's head so he was pummeling CNN. Oh. And, and, wow. And normally that would have been like, okay, whatever. But then he tweeted it, like he retweeted it on the actual president's Twitter account, which will be archived forever, right? It's in the National Archives and everything. And uh, <laughs> The first Twitter-based presidency. It, I mean, I, I, I am honored to be living through this era meme. and to be a witness yeah, to a this. a meme president, totally. And CNN, rather than going like, that was kind of childish, whatever, they were like, this is a threat. This is a threat to us. Like, he is advocating violence against CNN. <laughs> <laughs> Bait taken. And they, they went so far as to track this kid down. Uh, they, found, they found the original kid who made the GIF. And <laughs> or they was, thought they did. Yeah. Well, this is well, kind of what happened was they found this kid named Han Asshole Solo on Reddit. It was on the the R Donald the Donald board or whatever, and they found him and then they tracked him down and they found out who he was and they were like talking to him and they got him to apologize for it, and he apologized and he promised he'll never make anything like that again. And CNN said, and we have this his information and we won't disclose it if he keeps to his promise. <laughs> so they blackmailed him. They blackmailed this poor kid. And the fucked up thing about it is he didn't make the video. <laughs> like he right, just well, made that's... the gif. Someone took that gif 
added audio to it, like synced it up to the audio of the actual WWE event and made it into a video form and posted it on Twitter. Like that was com- someone completely different who didn't <laughs> did that. So it was the wrong kid. Uh, but hey, at least they still got to blackmail a child. Yeah, a f- because, for their own insecurity. <laughs> And to elevate Trump. Yeah. I mean, what a weird world we live in. How does this, like, seriously, would you have ever imagined that this was the level of, of public discourse that we would be having? <laughs> I remember I remember back when, it, when the conversation was about, like, just normal stuff, like Clinton getting blowjobs and yeah. stuff. Like, that seemed like, that seemed like, wow, you know, that's pretty, that's pretty, you know, it's some out there stuff. He did it in the and, Oval and Office, that is, and he lied about it under oath. How dare he? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's so quaint, right? I mean, it's like, and then you go back even further, and you're like, Nixon wiretapped a hotel room, <laughs> or whatever, and he didn't even need to because he was going to win in a landslide anyway. And what was the other <laughs> he, one? Uh, oh, what? A, oh, but when uh, Bush lied about weapons of mass destruction, eh. Yeah, 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 whatever, yeah. yeah, whatever. Oh, Trump, Trump. Tweeted a gif of <laughs> someone because of CNN getting fumbled. He tweeted a meme. How dare he? Yeah. I, I, it is the best time to be alive. It, this, is, <laughs> this is an age that uh, I, it's just, I, I just relish every moment of this. Um, despite the body counts and, of course, the carnage and the misery and the poverty and the plunder and the, and the death and the mayhem and all that stuff. But put that aside, this is one hilarious era. Okay, so here we're going to play a little game. It's going to be called Jezebel or Stormfront. (laughs) (laughs) I'm tired of watching brown men fall in love with white women on screen. The big sick has been recently lauded in the press lately, including here at Omitted. And not without good reason. It's a funny, heartwarming love story based on the true life experiences of co-writers, a married couple, um, Kubla, I don't know how to pronounce the name, and Emily V. Gordon. But as much as I liked it, and I did, I also found myself exhausted yet again by the on-screen depiction of a brown man wanting to date a white woman, while brown women are portrayed as alternatively as characters, stereotypes, inconse- inconsequential, and are the butts of jokes. Totally Jezebel. Okay. <laughs> that last yeah. part kind of gave it away. <laughs> but then it goes on to say, like, <laughs> that, that white women shouldn't be dating Asian men or brown men <laughs> on TV. Well, you know, it's a, it's a great concept for a segment because how often do we see – Basically, the far right and the left saying exactly the same things. They they don't want Horseshoe. cultures mixing. Horseshoe. They 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 want you know no cultural appropriation, right? Mm-hmm. What is cultural appropriation? <laughs> people mixing cultures. Oh no, that's bad. Your people are over there, and you see them. They're 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 segregating themselves. We're doing black only graduations, and I mean it just gets weirder and weirder and weirder. They're, Stop the, appropriating the, my Western culture. <laughs> it's it's really hard i can't it's really hard to keep up with but i have noticed wow you know like augustus invictus like really sounds like you know like liberal college professors (laughs) (laughs) it's really weird but yeah, it's 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 I guess it's come full circle or the or the horseshoe um you know yeah. model I I don't know. Horseshoe. <sighs> it, it, yeah, so I mean basically they want the same thing. If they would just like get over their kind of ideological blinders, they could like work together. You know, like they hey, should just make out. They yeah. need to just make out. Hey, you know what? You want black people to be away from white people because they're dangerous, and you want white people to get away from black people because you think that the black people are dangerous. Why don't you work together and get things done? <laughs> like, no. They have pink hair. They hate Western culture. You know what? No, <laughs> seriously, don't give them any ideas because they're. we really don't need them more powerful than they are now. Yeah, they'll At actually least now be they effective. Can... <laughs> Let, let them spend their energy attacking one another rather yeah. than joining forces and making our lives, you know, even more miserable. 
I think that might be the end of my news feed, at least to kind of catch you up on stuff. I, I should have done a better job because you, you told me at the last minute. I was like, oh, I got to find something that's happened recently. Yeah, I said I've been in the I said I've been in the woods and, and I don't know what's going yet. on. I, you know what? <laughs> even even in the in the in the woods of Maine, though, I keep getting glimpses of this hot dog meme. And, and my daughter tells me it's from Instagram. What's going on with that? I don't know. You're good. Yes, it's one. It's the meme of the month, right? I, I'm sure you've seen those little pictures of like the calendar month, the calendar of months, and then like everyone has a different meme. Has anybody claimed that the new hot dog meme is a new alt right symbol yet? Uh, someone needs to get on that. Let's let's announce that here right now. It is. <laughs> it clearly is. Yeah, clearly if, is. Have you noticed that neither the hot dog bun nor the wiener is black? It's clearly. <laughs> It's clearly a take on non miscegenation. That's what it is, and it needs to be yeah. stopped. And and there's probably a PizzaGate tie-in. <laughs> yeah, so. <laughs> definitely. Oh, I think that's what. Uh, I think that was one of the questions that was asked about the twelve hot dog buns. Hmm. <laughs> it all comes full circle. I'm gonna have to find out who this is and block them on Facebook. <laughs> preemptively block them. Yeah, preemptively yeah. block them. <laughs> <laughs> the apparently called it the Jewish conspiracy. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you have anything that you want to plug uh, before we start wrapping things up? Unless you got something else. Hey, to talk uh, about? free the weed man. The NJ weed man still in jail. Still, still in, jail? in jail. Like it's been like 120 days or something. The dude is in jail without bail because they say he. Um, for witness intimidation or something like that because oh, he God. he he released the name of a confidential informant so he could so he could cross examine him in court and i don't know whatever they they know that he's got a good chance of winning in court he's just such a such a won't play by their rules kind of guy that he sometimes wins and they're like well that's a little too uppity we're going to punish him now before his next trial and they're getting away with it. Now, the part I didn't understand, and I, I, I he went on a, Ed Fortune went on a hunger strike in jail, and Dog the Bounty Hunter talked him out of it. I kid you, I don't know how that happened, but that happened. Dog, really? Dog, yeah. <laughs> Ed, Ed Fortune, NJ Weedman on a hunger strike trying to get out, and Dog and 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 Dog the Bounty Hunters like, dude. You know, support you, but you got to eat. Okay, all right. And he did. I don't know. So, I don't know. Did he? Did he like convince him with bear mace? Is that what happened? <laughs> I have no idea, but I I assume it was on the. It was like on the phone. It was like a phone conversation. Oh, I think. Okay. So, I can't wait to find out more. But we got to get Ed out of jail. So, uh, anybody has the number for the A team or or <laughs> or, or or like knows how to buy off people in, in New Jersey government. It's time to it's time to get that happening. Yeah, it, so that's happening and meanwhile in, in, in Las Vegas, we're running out of weed. We're really? Running, we're running out of legal weed cuz it, it it was legalized and all the stores are selling or the the dispensaries are selling it. And now they're running out of weed. <laughs> they just can't keep up with the demand. And there's kind of like a lot of like uh, what, what kind of like legal loopholes that they have to, well, not loopholes, but kind of legal hurdles that they have to kind of go over to, to provide it. So there's kind of like a conflict, and now legislators have to go, okay, maybe we have too many rules on this stuff. Maybe we should start rolling things back. And you know they won't. <laughs> <laughs> They're just going to wait until someone finds a loophole to fill the demand, which is sad because we're having Freedom Fest come up next month. And, you know, libertarians, legal weed, you know this is going to get ugly. <laughs> I think well, I mean, m most libertarians I know prefer illegal weed. Yeah, They're, this this whole idea of legal weed, paying taxes on it, it, it kind of gives people the willies. But um, I, you know, I checked out some of the stores in Colorado just to see what it was like and see what the vibe was, and uh, I thought it was quite. I thought it was um, you know definitely getting there, definitely civilized. Yeah. I saw certainly a lot of stores in Colorado. Every little town seemed to have one or two or three. Here in Maine, they voted to legalize it, but it hasn't really kicked in yet. Yeah. I'm not sure what the current status is, but there's there's a few medical weed stories you see, but I, there's no recreational businesses as of yet. But the parasites are lining up. Yep. They are like, oh, man. First of all, the, all the, the, the little town busybodies, they have the power to block it locally. 
So a lot of, of them are just like, well, wait a minute. Yeah. Until we get a cut, it's banned. Okay, mm -hmm. like banned, and now come to us with an offer. You know, is is sort of their approach. Um, just no, no, no. Well, what's in it for me? And these people are so, just this is the worst. Yeah. So they're they're already trying to kill this fledgling industry before it even gets off the ground here in Maine. And the the a story I thought that's very similar. Um, I've been seeing. You know, I see a lot of moose up here in Maine. It's, it's just kind of fun to watch them. You see them. I don't get them in Pennsylvania, so I like to study them and learn about them and watch them in the wild. But I've, but I've been hearing from the, the moose experts that the population is suffering because of ticks. These bloods, the, the, the calves are dying. They're finding that the, the baby moose are dying of ticks. Oh, oh, okay. You're talking about like actual ticks, not... <laughs> Actual ticks Not like are state, killing state. Are, okay, yeah. yeah, are killing baby <laughs> okay. moose before they can before they can grow to adulthood. And I thought that's exactly what they're trying to do to the weed industry here. They are just they are just trying to suck it dry before it even before it even matures. So I don't know. I, I I'm sure it'll be okay. Luckily, Mainers do have a tradition of completely ignoring laws and not paying taxes. Yeah. So whatever these parasites have in mind, it's only going to be partially successful. Yeah. But here here's been my prediction, and this is I think this is going to be great. So marijuana is legal uh, in Nevada, but you can't smoke it on the strip, and you can't smoke it in hotel rooms on the strip. So. My prediction is people are going to go and buy edibles, and they're not going to be familiar with edibles, and they're going to eat them. And go, oh, it's it's fine. Like I'll just be an, I'll just I'll just be high because I'll eat it right. And then an hour later, and they'll be like, oh, I'm not high yet. Maybe I should eat a little bit more. And I'm going to predict that there's going to be like some libertarians here and there that are going to be like freaking out on the on the Freedom Press convention floor. Oh my God, I'm having an overdose. Call nine one one. I guarantee you, it's going to happen. I'm okay, now let's let's picture video. which libertarian we want that to happen to. Hmm. Austin Peterson. <laughs> it is kind of that Gary fake Johnson. libertarian type of conference that would have people like Gary Johnson. Although, you know what, Gary Johnson's tolerance is probably so high that he's not going to have any. It wouldn't have any effect on him. I don't think he would be. I don't think he'll be there. I think he's kind of kicked. Well, I is think this where they had? Didn't they have Trump at this one like a couple years ago? Uh, a couple of years ago, wasn't that the one that I went to? The um, they're gonna have William Shatner. Uh, he's the head keynote speaker. <laughs> Sweet. So like Brian Sovereign was like, I have to go. Um, <laughs> oh, that'll be cool. Well, our friend, um, our friend Terry Brock was MC for that at least one or two years in the past, mm. um, and that's how he got to meet uh, Lynn Albrecht, and how I got she to meet Terry Brock. Yeah. So, um, got to anyway, a bunch so, of people. there's a lot of cool people that show up to that thing, but yeah, it seems yeah. like the people who are throwing it and the people that are really pushing it, uh, and have a lot of vendor space are like the Wayne Allen roots and Bob, I, Bob Ooh. Barr was there. I met him. Ooh. I wanted to get a selfie with him, <laughs> giving him the rabbit, <laughs> the bunny ears. That's, I love that picture. It's the greatest thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> I'm going to make that the image again. <laughs> this is the best picture in the universe, I swear. That's like 10 years ago. That's like from like 10 years ago. It's been a while. Yeah. So, Man, hey, did you see, did you, speaking of washed up LP candidates, did, there is a great meme on Liberty, Liberty memes that I just saw where it's got a picture of nine different people and it says, thank you for yeah. spreading the message <laughs> of Liberty. That. And it's got a word over each person and it's got Lysander Spooner and Murray Rothbard and Tom Woods Mary and, Ruart. and, and anyway, but right over, right over, <laughs> over Gary not you. Johnson, it says, not you. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> oh. I still think my favorite version of that is the pictures of garlic bread. <laughs> it says, like, thank you for being the best bread. And then in the middle, it says, not you, but it's banana bread. And I was like, finally. <laughs> Someone recognizes banana bread is terrible. <laughs> Can we just admit that it's terrible, please, already? <sighs> you probably like Man, it. Anyway. <laughs> You're like, no comment. <laughs> I, I love banana bread. No, oh, yeah. I love banana bread. And uh, anyway, all right. So, 
Was that everything you wanted to, to plug? You're not coming to Freedom Fest? Womp womp. Nope, unfortunately. Uh, wh- hey, what about uh, DEF CON? Are you going to that? Uh, that's that's in Vegas, right? Um, I, I could go, but I can't bring my cell phone. I'd have to get, I'd get my burner reactivated. <laughs> So I'm going to be over there in the area. <laughs> yeah, I was warned. If I go, don't bring your electronics. <laughs> just don't. Just, don't even. Just, no. Don't, don't like, turn them off. Just don't bring them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, just right. flat don't, out don't bring them. Just don't bring any electronics with you for that one. Yeah. So people uh, go there. I hear they're going to try to hack hardware wallets. So that I think that could be cool. They already got the Jack's wallet. All you have to do is be on a, all you have to do is be on a network. Where someone has a Jack's wallet, and they'll have all your keys to all your wallets. Interesting. Jack wallet. Yeah. Uh, but but a, a hardware wallet is supposed to be oh, you know, oh, a little oh, tougher. A wallet. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway. Um, so, oh, speaking of, I got to hang out with uh, Derek Slopey, inventor mm-hmm. of Fiend Phone, of course, and uh, Drew Phillips and cool um, some, of the, some of that gang or were hanging around. And they came up to Moosehead Lake and hung out with us up there. So that was super cool. Um, they're, they're, those are my kind of libertarians, the guys that are, like, building sneaky stuff. Yeah. I really need to get on Agro's hosting. But Bitcoin is being a pain in the ass right now. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Bitcoin is being oh, – well, okay, so I'm not getting donations through Bitcoin right now. And there's good reason for that because the transaction fees are insane. Uh, I can't buy Bitcoin through Coinbase, so that really kind of limits where I can buy Bitcoin unless I'm going to buy like a copious amounts from from Mycelium, and it's, and then they're going to take half of it away because of transaction fees. It's a mess. It's a total total mess. So I've hmm. just been like, I'm just going to use Litecoin <laughs> and and Zcash and Monero until this all gets worked out. Hey, why not? I, I love a, a competitive marketplace. Mm-hmm. And, you know, from, from day one with Bitcoin, I knew, hey, Bitcoin might not be the one. But this concept of a blockchain yeah. and a cryptocurrency, this is, this. Uh, I thought, this is good. This is going to rock. So who knows where it'll end up? Yeah. But hopefully the it's fork, rocking. if somehow, I hope the fork fixes everything and everything goes fine. That's what I'm hoping. Transaction fees will be fixed. Please, I'm backing please. whatever Roger Veer wants, not because I really understand it, because he's, <laughs> but just, but just because he's a dude, and you know he's earned my respect, and he's the bro. and when I when I, he seems to make so much sense whenever I hear him talk, that I feel like you know that our our interests are are, you know, often aligned. So I'm going with what he with with his recommendation. Hmm. Let's hope. What, uh, do you know what his recommendation is? <laughs> Fork it. Fork it. I think he. I think he wanted to fork. I, I mean, it, I don't want to put words in his mouth, but I, he was not afraid of the fork, and he wanted a what he called an upgrade. Upgrade it. You know, upgrade the protocol to make it. I guess to make it more in line with the Satoshi's vision. Mm-hmm. So and to and to make sure the blocks aren't all full and um, make sure it's. You know, he wants it to be a tool for buying coffee and to and for everyday transactions, not for. Not for not for large transactions and you know and 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 stacking it up and not spending. He wants it part of daily life. So, yeah. and and I that's what I want too. So, yeah. Hope that know, works out. And I, I hope the whole speculative market thing kind of falls away and just we just get like a money, like an actual money that's that's that I can store long term, right? Yeah. Not have, not have this high volatility where it's. Yeah, or you know, or it, three thousand you know, dollars sh- one day, and then the next day it's back down to four hundred. That's that's. It makes it. It does make it harder to use, yeah. but um, I, it seems like it's been relative. I mean, despite the fact that it's surged up to three thousand dollars and back down to twenty four hundred, it's it's not like it went down to to three hundred. Right. So it's a whole lot more stable than it was the fir- the first time. It was like sixteen, and then it went all the way down to two, and it was like. <laughs> Whoa, that's a drop. <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, you would have lost I was still your like, shirt. Well, whatever. And yeah. like, whatever. You know, see what happens next. You know, but, but I just want to keep, just keep stacking it. Just keep accumulating, keep accumulating. Just keep stacking, just keep stacking, stacking. Yeah. <laughs> all right, man. It's a great talk. Anyway, with that's you again. all I got. <laughs> Is there anything I should plug? Uh, ask Babby. Uh, yeah, ask, uh, ask more Dear Babby questions. 
Uh, rate us on iTunes. Um, you, you could win a flag if it's funny. Uh, yep, yeah, that was it. Anyways, worms. <laughs> worms.